Hi besties, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Today we're going to be talking about something that's near and dear to my heart, um, overcoming eczema, something that I have had for, I don't know, so many years now, like since I was about four. Um, and I'm not going to say how old I am, but ultimately like the vast majority of my life, right? 90% of my life, um, I've had this debilitating chronic illness um, that is called eczema. So typically with eczema and if you have asthma, if you have two comorbidities or whatever they call it, you actually typically also have hay fever, which is the third one. I don't have like severe hay fever. My husband seems to have, my partner seems to have worse, but um, I definitely have it. So I have the trifecta, asthma, eczema, and hay fever. Yay! <laughs> so lucky! Um, and uh, as a result, I've really had to transform so much in my life to really be able to fully overcome it. And I'm still like, I definitely still have eczema in my hands. You probably can't see it here, but, um, and I have eczema in general. So my skin will like, if I touch dander or if I touch dust, it automatically just starts like bubbling up and getting really, really itchy. So I have that kind of like contact dermatitis, um, but I've completely transformed so much like, when I was really young and in middle school or so, I actually had like eczema all over my arms and it was so incredibly itchy that I couldn't stop itching, right? And I used steroids routinely since I was a young kid, but it still wasn't enough to like overcome it. Um, so I didn't know what food allergies, you know, back then I don't think people were super aware. And even now the doctors will say that food allergies don't really cause asthma, but eczema, excuse me, but for me it did, right? So you have to really like, it, test, it just takes time with chronic illness. You really have to like spend the time and energy uh, learning about the illness, learning about what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Um, so essentially when I moved to Japan, I ended up trying everything. I was like so sick of having eczema and my skin definitely got worse when I moved there. And that could be related to stress because I was moving to a completely different country at the age of 26, but also like, you know, um, the foods, right? They have a lot of MSG, they call it Aminosan. Um, so you can see it in basically every single, like you look at any product and you look at the back and it says Aminosan. So basically they have MSG in like literally everything, even like tomato sauce that's like canned just literally everywhere. So I wasn't initially sure if that's like what was causing my eczema and making it worse. Um, but anyways, I was willing to try anything. And so before leaving Japan, I went, to, I had some uh, ability and opportunities to visit natural paths. And they recommended that I try a gluten-free diet, even if it didn't help me, just to try it, right? And so I did. I actually ended up, I tried acupuncture as well, which didn't help me personally, but um, I'm sure it helps other people. I just don't really like needles. And so it was really, really hard for me to go. <laughs> I just didn't like it. It wasn't a fun experience because I personally hate needles. So I just don't want to see them. I don't want them on me, but I have tried it at least like eight times now in my life for a variety of different illnesses. Um, and I do think like, if you are okay with needles, it will definitely help. It just takes a long time, right? With anything like um, Western medicine is usually typically very fast, but it has dramatic side effects. Uh, Eastern medicine typically takes a lot longer, like three to four times as long, but it has fewer side effects and can really help demonstrate like the ability to fully overcome something over time, right? Without needing Western medication as often. I think with Western medication, people tend to get more dependent on the medication, like even Tylenol, right? Like if you are used to taking it, you'll take it more often, things like that. Um, anyways, that's another story for not here or there, but ultimately for me, I just want to share my experience um, of overcoming my eczema and I'm not a medical professional, as you know, because you've been following my channel. Um, but ultimately, I really have had a lot of health obstacles that I really hope um, like by sharing this, it can really help a lot of people. And so um, when I was in Japan, I was fortunate enough to meet uh, uh, someone who also had skin problems and they recommended one of the best doctors in Kobe. Um, who was, you know, one of the top doc skin doctors in Japan. And luckily he lived two hours near, you know, away from me. And um, I ended up like doing a bunch of different things. So besides meditating a lot every single day to reduce the stress, um, I also went two hours to Kobe at least 10 times to do blood tests. I did, um, he had me on a regimen of basically this like lotion that they don't sell in the US, unfortunately, but it's this uh, lotion that heats up. It's for um, diet, people with diabetes or arthritis or things like that. And it heats up the, the veins. Um, and so I was on a regimen initially of like five days of steroids every single day, twice a day. And then two days of this like in 
um, heel, like heating element. And then uh, it slowly dwindled down. The steroids dwindled down, right? So it flipped. So I was doing like three days of every single week it would change. And uh, I would do three days of steroids and four days of the, you know, anti-inflammatory medicine. Um, and that seemed to work remarkably well. The other thing I did is I went, I did onsen baths. So you can buy these like bath salts in Japan. You can also buy them here on Amazon. They're just Japanese bath salts. I can link them in my bio below. Um, and essentially that really helped to calm the skin. So I would literally take baths every single night, which was nice. Um, I can't do it as much here anymore. Um, but it was really, really nice. The other thing I did is I took Benadryl. I brought Benadryl from the US to Japan and took it because Japan has their own medication, but it's a lot weaker and I just didn't like it. So I was like, I'll just stick with what I know. And that helped too, because it helps to calm all of the, like your body thinks that it's, you know, um, it thinks that it's allergic to a lot of things and will uh, attack itself, right? So um, ultimately that helped and yeah. Oh, I also instituted a gluten-free diet and I got rid of pretty much all the amino, MSG, amino sang foods in my diet. So I had to start eating really fresh items. If I got anything packaged from grocery stores or convenience stores, konbini in Japan, um, I had to like be really careful. So I did like yogurt only or, you know, things like that were much healthier, like fruit, fresh fruit, uh, fresh salads, and I didn't use the sauce. Um, I didn't get any like prepared items that had any MSG in them. And so that dramatically helped too. <laughs> So I was on this regimen of the steroids the, and the, in, like, the heating medication. I was also taking nightly baths, second thing. Third thing, I was taking better drill when I needed it, not all the time. Fourth thing, I completely cleaned my diet and just tried to see and eliminate, right? I did an elimination diet to see what would like trigger my eczema and what would not, you know, what would help it. And then I did an 80-20 rule, like the Pareto principle of 80% of the time eating as healthy as I, and clean as I possibly could and the 20% time eating whatever I wanted, like, um, you know, baked goods that weren't gluten-free, things like that. And, um, and then sometimes you can't avoid it, right? If you go to restaurants, if you go to families' houses, you can't avoid not eating like gluten-free soy sauce. You, you have to eat soy sauce. And so, um, but at home, every time I cooked, I used gluten-free soy sauce. So that was really helpful. And yeah, I just um, meditated a lot. That was what also helped me transform. So I went from having like eczema on 90% of my body to 20% or less, like maybe 10% now. And uh, that has dramatically improved the quality of my life. Um, and I, the last thing I tried was UV lighting at the doctor's office through the medical profession, which I think helped a little bit. Um, I think it's very similar to like, um, you know, acupuncture in general, or like UV lighting, like it doesn't have many side effects, but again, it only helps like if you do it a long time. And so, um, yeah, but I think what the doctor told me in Kobe, which might be also helpful is other little things you can try is like, you can get the fake nails. I don't like nails. Um, so I never have it cause I like to type and I like, anyways, so you can get the fake nails and that actually will help you reduce your itching because it doesn't feel as good. What I do instead, because I don't like nails, is I just cut my nails really, really short. So I don't have that issue either because I don't, yeah, I, you know, I can still, it feels really good to itch. But if you have the fake nails, it's even better. It feels less good to itch. So that's like a little tip and trick. Um, the other thing is he, you know, he was a big proponent of trying anything that helps, even if it wasn't, you know, as long as it didn't hurt you, right? So for example, I tried um, drinking bone broth every day. And I did, I tried to do like organic bone broth, which is like insanely expensive. So I made it on my own. So I would just buy bones that I thought were organic, maybe not, but you know, ultimately just buying bones and then cooking a, a soup with it and drinking that soup every day. And that seemed to help as well. I don't think it hurt. It was really to fix my gut and try to get rid of the toxins and things like that. Um, and yeah, I think that was it. I mean, there's so many, I really hope this can be of use and of value to you. And I really hope it helps you overcome eczema or at least look into other options that might be valuable for you. Um, you know, this is my own personal experience. This is all, all the things that really, really helped me. Um, and I, yeah, I really reckon, oh, also like if you work out, definitely shower right after because that seems to like cause me at least personally, um, like itchiness if I'm, my skin is sweaty, but, or if you're like in a human environment, right? Same thing, shower quickly, but yeah, ultimately, I really hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe. I'm really grateful to see you here. Thank you so much. Bye.